friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. This is the Duras by Civivi, as you saw in the thumbnail. It's a sub three inch blade, just barely. And hollow grind. It's got a forward choil for, you know, really good uh, grip, especially if you want to have your thumb weight right behind the edge and, you know, working hard on stuff. A little bit of fun whittling, maybe. G10 handle scales. You can get it in Damascus or you can get it in D2 steel. Uh, both of these types of steel, uh, they say they're hardening them to between 59 and 61. So I'm saying 60 on the Rockwell scale, give or take a little bit. It's a flipper and uh, it's a good knife. Uh, deep carry pocket clip left and right, comfortable in hand. You know, my hands are just within to the extra large range and, you know, it's just within the size. If I don't use the forward choil of me being able to use this knife, I wouldn't want it to be too much smaller unless I wanted to do a three finger grip. So most people are going to find this knife comfortable to hold, just not the guys with the really big extra large hands. Bandit wanted to say hi, so there you go. Hey buddy, how's it going? Are you happy? Look over here at the lens. Look right there. No, no, over here. Look where my finger is. Look over here. Yeah, that's a pretty good eyes on you, right? Yes, you got pretty good eyes on you. He's getting to be a little bit older, dog. He's a senior now. He'll be turning, uh... Oh boy, I forgot your age, buddy. Are you turning eight or turning nine? You just love me anyways. Okay, I'm going to put you down because we got to finish the intro. I believe I got mine from IntegrityKnives.com in Canada. I checked their website. They don't have the Duras anymore. At the time, they only had the one with Damascus in, uh, in their listings, and now there's none there. But check out IntegrityKnives.com. Use coupon code CCE to get 10% off. And uh, if, this get, if this gets posted before the end of the day on Sunday, they've got a sale going on right now of their zero tolerance knives. Everything in stock, 20% off. Not bad, but my coupon code works for anything at regular price, 10% off. So without any further ado, uh, let's get to the tabletop and take a good look at this guy. Well, I guess I should double check. I believe it came with a CVV pouch. Some guys are really uh, into getting a pouch with their knife. Uh, it's just a regular soft pouch. Microfiber cloth, uh, some stickers. Usually get a green one and a yellow one in most of them. And just about the CVV company. It's a budget pouch. And this is a budget knife. In my opinion, it's still a budget knife, even though it has a Damascus blade. Like I said, you can get it with the D2 if you prefer D2 instead. But being as this was the only one they had, and, uh, you know, I like to buy Canadian every once in a while at least, so I got this from Integrity Knives. Notice the pattern on the Damascus. I had no idea this is the pattern I was going to get because on the pictures, I'll show some right now, there's different patterns on there. So I don't know how you're going to tell which pattern you're going to get if you buy one. Unfortunately, that's just something I do not know. I'm very happy that this one's got a pattern I like. So that's all I can say about that. You can also get this right now at White Mountain Knives. You can get the same coupon code CCE with 10% off there as well. So if in the United States, Go to uh, White Mountain Knives. If you're in Canada, check out Integrity Knives. Then check out White Mountain Knives because they've got a lot more selection. Integrity Knives is slowly growing as a company and getting more and more different models and brands all the time. So keep checking them out regularly. I found this also, I'm doing the price stuff first, at uh, Blades Canada. If you want to pay an extra 45 Canadian dollars or about 53 more Canadian dollars for the Damascus one, then go ahead and buy it at Blades Canada. I've got a link down below to make it easy for you. And of course, I'm factoring that $45 D2 
difference after you take the 10% off at White Mountain Knives. So the price for this, $76.50 American, minus 10%, $68.85. Uh, in Canada, it's $139.99 Canadian. So it's either 87 Canadian at White Mountain Knives or 140. If you like to shop at Amazon USA, they've got these there as well. A number of different sellers have them. Comes in four different colors. Damascus has black G10. You can also get orange G10, brown G10, which is actually a nice brown color. It almost looked like wood, uh, or gray G10. That covers the prices and things. Now let's look at this knife. A little size comparison with the Ontario Rat 1. Oh, yep, yeah, just barely. I'll not quite get it on the screen. So it's definitely a smaller knife. It's got a blade that's not uh, much smaller, but small enough. But, you know, when I'm cutting, I tend to use, you know, the first inch and a half of the knife for most of the things that I cut. So with this one, you just don't have a lot of the extra. You still have a pretty decent tip. It does thin out a little bit at the tip, so it's not a very strong knife for doing any prying or anything, which no knife is good for that anyways. But you know, you've got a swedge up here and then the hollow grind here. And so it comes up to here with a bit of a rib. So it's not weak behind the tip, but it's certainly not extra strong behind the tip at all. All belly, it's got a radius all the way along. And then you've got your forward finger trail right here. And uh, it's quite comfortable. The spine's got a swedge that comes all the way back. That's one thing I would have liked to have had changed if the swedge wouldn't come all the way back. I'd like it a little wider right here because I like a knife this size, especially for doing a little bit of whittling around a campfire like because it fills my hand so it's got a nice secure grip. Not a lot of extra blade that gets in the way of doing what you want to do. You got a tip to do, you know, delicate stuff. You know, it's just a nice knife to, to work with, in my opinion. It slices great. You know, I could take apart an apple easily with this. It slices really well. Uh, take apart a few boxes with this. I carried it for, you know, many times. I carried it about six or seven times. Uh, it's a nice knife. I really like how it feels. The G10 handle scales have a nice 3D milling. So we've got these little lines milled in there for extra traction. There's no jimping anywhere on the handle on the grip part. It, nice radius edges, very comfortable in hand. Uh, you can see the liners there. We've got a G10 backspacer and there's the lanyard hole. It's inset, which I really, really like. So the paracord's not gonna bulk out on there. So that's a really good placement for the uh, lanyard hole. They've got their own custom screws here instead of button screws that are so very common on so many knives. So Civivi's really good for that. There's the uh, cutout area here for the pocket clip for the left side. And here's the D-shaped pivot. It's actually, it's not a D-shaped pivot pin to stop it spinning. There's a little detent, uh, a little spot behind the head of the screw here on the G10 that stops it from spinning. I've, sh I've shown it in each Civivi video. I'll show you some close-ups of that when I take the knife apart. And then on the other side here, we've got the pocket clip, stainless steel pocket clip. We've got flush screws, so no button screws there. And uh, there's the T8 here, T8, and those are T6 screws. No blade play, side to side, up and down. Lockup is excellent. The liner lock engages with the tang of the blade at a perfect spot. There's room for it to wear over. That would take many years of good hard use for it to wear all the way over, but that's perfect. A little bit of jimping right there. That's the only jimping is on the liner lock release. Very easy to get your thumb in there to get some grip and then push it out of the way and then close the knife. The detent that holds it closed, when it's closed, it does, it holds it. You can shake the knife body all you want. That blade is not gonna come out, which is a good thing. And the flipper, it's got some jimping on the front of it. You do a light switch method and it comes flying out very, very well. If I push a little bit down on an angle, about a 45 degree angle, I can get it to deploy as well. 
So very good. Quite comfortable. It's it's a knife that makes a lot of sense to me, especially with the forward choil not being too small. Most knives I that have a forward choil, I get into them, and like I mentioned in the uh, Senran Mew, the SRM knife that I reviewed, you know, I've got a couple of scars that are healing up right here. I, I nicked my finger a couple times. Very minor nicks, but they're there. I would like to see one change, and uh, and this is a, almost every knife that's got a forward choil. What I would like to see is the steel removed back to here. So I'm put this marker on here. If that steel was removed right there, then your finger would be touching the G10 and the liners right here. It would feel more secure, at least would to me, and you'd have more room there. You'd be able to give the cutting edge a little more length. It's just, it makes sense to me that that's something that would be good. One question that I have, uh, this is sort of a rosebud Damascus. All the pictures of the uh, on uh, Civivi's website they show a different kind of Damascus, different pattern, and the the lines you can just barely see some lines in there, but they've sort of been polished over to, to the naked eye. It's really hard to see. Same thing in here; it's been polished, and so you can't see the different lines of the different layers in there. And so some people are going to look at that and say, you know, it's fake. It's not real Damascus. I trust that they're real. Uh, every time they've had their steel tested, they have the steel that they claim to have. So I've got no reason to doubt that this is genuine Damascus. Okay, so now let's take this knife apart and see it on the inside. So I've just taken it apart. There is some oil here on the G10 on this handle scale, so I'll wipe that off. And there's oil here on the surface. So you can see the skeletonizing there. Let's finish taking this apart. So there you go. Put it under my hand so you can see the contrast. It looks like it's a ceramic ball, uh, detent ball right there. But the ball bearings, it says they're steel on their website, but they are ceramic. Uh, maybe I read it for the D2 ones. I would doubt that they would have different ball bearings for them, but these look just like ceramic ball bearings and not like steel ball bearings at all. We've got some Loctite, some blue Loctite on the screws. Uh, not on the pivot screw. That looks like it's just the way it is. And lots of skeletonizing on uh, the show side liner to help keep it light. And uh, this side. And I told you I was going to show you the uh, what, what they keep from... Uh, having the pivot screw spin there's just on this side right there there's a little bit of steel removed on the screw so it's a little bit thinner right there and then here you can see the shiny reflective part but then right at the base here there's a little bit of a buildup there's some g10 that's not been removed and so that indexes in with this and it makes the C sit in the right direction and it stops it from spinning and it works wonderfully on G10. So that's it. Very well made. I'm going to put it back together again. I'll take some pictures of the parts and put it back together and we'll keep on this video. Okay, so now it's time to go over all the sizes, dimensions, all that kind of information. We'll have this on the screen while we do that. The weight of this knife, 107 grams, three and three quarter ounces, pretty good. The factory sharpness, 100 best, very good. The length of the cutting edge, 66.3 millimeters, that's 2.61 inches. The blade length, tip to the closest spot on the handle, 75.7 millimeters, 
2.98 inches. The blade thickness over here where it's flat, 2.89 millimeters, 0.113 of an inch, so a little bit under an eighth of an inch. The blade depth, largest right there, that is 28.6 millimeters, 1.13 inches. How thick is it behind the grind? 0.39 millimeters, 15 thousandths of an inch. No wonder it slices like a dream. The grind angles, 20.6, 22.2. Just a very tiny bit of difference right at the heel of the blade and on the, close to the tip on one side. Very little difference along the length, so that's well sharpened. The handle length, 98.9 millimeters, 3.89 inches. The uh, grip area on the main part of the handle, it's about eight centimeters, about three and a quarter inches. If you add in the forward choil, it's about 10 and a half centimeters, uh, just a bit over four inches. Now for the handle thickness, not counting the pocket clip, 14.1 millimeters, 0.55 of an inch. That's just fine. The knife depth, the knife handle depth, this is within the grip area, 26.3, that's 1.04 inches. The knife depth, when it's closed, it's widest with the flipper, 37.6 millimeters, 1.48 inches. And the total length of the knife when the blade is deployed, 174.6 millimeters, 6.87 inches. Not bad. The proportions between the blade and the handle are very good. I didn't show you the balance point before. It's right there. I wouldn't mind if it was, you know, a little bit over, but it's very close to perfect. So what are my thoughts on this thing? I think it's very well designed. I think it's well machined, good materials, good workmanship. Where's the flaws? Now, there's not really any flaws. There's a couple things I wouldn't mind having changed. Like I said, if the grip came back a little bit closer to the handle right there, that would be a nice little change. I wouldn't mind if they had some stainless steels, you know, maybe some 14C28N, maybe some N690, maybe some micarta or carbon fiber or not carbon fiber laminate, but solid carbon fiber or wood, you know, that would be nice. But of course, those are all upgrades and uh, it's quite nice as it is, but I wouldn't mind, well, 14C28N wouldn't really be an upgrade. It's just a good stainless option instead of D2. D2 is good. I like it, but I'm really starting to get tired of seeing D2 almost everywhere. Uh, it's been the last two and a half, almost three years since the amount of blades coming out with D2 has just turned into a flood. Yeah, I like it, but hey, I like other steel too. So, what do you think of this knife? Please leave your comments down below. Do you have one? Do you want to get one? Thanks to my Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. Thanks to everyone who likes, shares, comments, subscribes. And remember, friends, cut towards your chum. Not your thumb. Bye for now.